Hello and welcome to this interview. I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Nick Lees. He is Senior Lecturer at Lincoln University in New Zealand and also Director of the Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce. Nick, it's great to have you on. Thanks so much for being here. Hi, Alistair. Yeah, really uh, appreciate um, meeting up with you. Looking forward to having a chat. Great. Nick, we will talk about your recent work and mm -hmm. You know, we're using a lot of resources uh, to produce, process, and deliver food to, well, a growing number of consumers mm -hmm. worldwide. Yeah. How significant are the environmental, the um, ethical, and also the social impacts of agri-food supply chains today? Yeah. So I guess I'd first like to really just highlight the um, actually some of the successes of modern agriculture because um, you know often today we, we a lot of the discussion is around the impact of uh, modern agriculture but if if you look back particularly over the last hundred years in Western society and and more recently we can see in countries like China agriculture or modern agriculture has, has actually been really successful in a number of uh, areas and I guess. A caveat to what I'm going to go on and say is that I also recognise that there are large populations in the world that are that are still malnourished, and and so you know we're not a complete global success. But if we look at the Western world and and also uh, countries like China, modern agriculture has been really successful in delivering uh, safe food to the um, area and people uh, globally. So that's a really important thing because you know the, that food supply has um, increased life expectancy, big reductions in uh, infant mortality. Uh, there have been significant reductions in poverty. China is a, a really good example of that. And the reality is, you and I can sit here and have a conversation because somebody else is producing food for us. So you know, modern agriculture really does underpin uh, modern society in many ways, and and I think that's often forgotten when we look at the the impacts however having said that you know modern agriculture really has uh, reached a, po a point where it is having a real significant impact on the planet and in reality food production is the largest source of uh, environmental degradation and it's having a huge impact on uh, the global system and the biological uh, climate system and if we just look at some of the, you know, why is, is agriculture, why is food such a thing that has so much impact? Well, you know, food is, uses about 40% of all land on, on the surface of the earth. Um, it's also re responsible for about 30% of greenhouse gases um, and about 70% of, of fresh water. So if we look at its impacts on uh, the environment, we can see that there's, you know, been huge impact on biodiversity loss. That's not only just uh, through um, natural systems that have been converted to agriculture, but it, it's it's a result of you know a lot of agriculture is monocultural. You know we're fed by a relatively um, low number of crops, and you know those crops tend to be uh, grown in a, in a very biodiverse lacking environment. Um, so that's a big impact. I mean, agriculture, as, as I said, 30% of greenhouse gases. So, you know, agriculture is having a significant impact on, on climate change. And, you know, we can't really address climate change without in some way addressing the, the impacts of, of agriculture and greenhouse gases. And, you know, particularly around um, uh, beef production or production from ruminant animals, because, you know, methane is an inherent part of the the production process, and and it's not something that you can easily um, change. And not only that, you've got the interaction between you know agriculture is driving climate change, and but climate change is actually impacting agriculture as well. So there's a real interaction going on there, and you know so we also see agriculture affecting uh, contamination of uh, water resources and particularly the use of uh, nitrogen and phosphate fertilizers that, that can have significant impact or are having significant impact on uh, the water ecosystem. And the other thing that's really important to think about in, in agriculture is that agriculture and, and human health 
are inextricably linked because agriculture is about producing our food. Food production impacts or food production and consumption impacts significantly on human health. Um, so, you know, we can see really in the West the impact of unhealthy diets and diet related diseases such as obesity, heart disease, and stroke. So, there's a real interaction between human health and the health of the planet, uh, particularly around the, the agricultural system. There was a really important um, uh, study published uh, in 2019 by um, the Eat Lancet Journal, and it produced a report. Uh, which was called Food in the Anthropomycene. And it was really looking at how can we have healthy diets from a sustainable food production system? And, you know, they really highlighted the fact that, you know, the e evidence is really starting to show that many of our env environmental uh, systems and processes are actually already probably being pushed beyond their environmental li limits. And in some cases, we could question whether they've actually reached tipping points. From, from which it's very difficult to, to, to reverse the process. They also made the statement or, or they uh, produced evidence to show that our food system um, is threatening both human health and environmental sustainability and looked at how those two things were very linked. And they called for uh, a great uh, food transformation. So part of what they were saying was that the, the global food system needs to fundamentally change uh, the way it operates and that that requires more than just incremental change or innovation. It actually involves quite deep structural change. So these global agri-food supply chains, they have many different players, many different companies. There's, a, is it fair to say there's a lot of complexity in these systems? and that actually trying to change that to address these problems you just mentioned is going to be very hard is, is it fair yeah. to say that i yeah definitely and i think the agri-food supply chains even the food system um has a lot of components and and i think you know what is often recognized and not necessarily recognized is that there are multiple systems operating here and and two of them at least are fundamentally biological systems. So, you know, food production itself is a complex of a biological system and other systems that, that are interacting with that. Um, and biological systems we know are, are complex systems and, and they operate as, as complex systems do. Um, and that's one of the fundamental difficulties with changing uh, the food system is that you've got this fundamental biological system that isn't easy to change. Um, and to give you an example of that, you know, probably the other transformation that we're really looking at is, is in terms of how we're uh, or, or changing from fossil fuels to alternative energy. Now, you can take an internal uh, combustion engine and replace it with a electric engine. And, and that's achieved by engineering. However, if you want to fundamentally change biological systems, those are very hard to change. So you know, an example of that would be uh, with ruminant animals. So, so beef and dairy cattle. The fundamental process in the rumen is functions by bacteria um, converting um, food or um, forage that that is most other animals can't consume you know um, they they can convert hay or, or um, food that is basically undigestible and within the rumen they can create that and change that into their their feed supply their, their nutrients but a fundamental part of that process is the release of methane and you can't stop the methane without affecting the nutrient supply to the animals and also if you if you are even looking at how do you change you know can we breed animals that have lower methane emissions well breeding is a fundamentally slow process it, as, as you know it's, it, as i say it's not like an engineering problem you, you have to deeply understand the biological system and also the fact that changing one component of the system so you know trying to reduce the methane production 
uh, will have impacts on other parts of the system, you know, in terms of productivity, in terms of the way the animals work. So you've got this fundamental biological system and biological products, um, and then that actually interacts with, with a human biological system. So you've already got two quite distinct biological systems, which themselves are complex systems. And then overlaying that, you've got um, the kind of socioeconomic system and uh, human social and, and cultural systems uh, that again are complex systems. So you've got this interplay between bi you know, biology at the production level and then biology at the, at the food consumption and then, you know, particularly with food, there are, there are very deeply embedded cultural factors around food consumption, and, you know, those aren't, aren't easy to change. So, yeah, trying to bring change is really difficult. And the first thing, I think, is to really recognize and understand those biological systems. And I guess one of the challenges in terms of bringing about that change is that what you're the way science works or the way we work in terms of trying to work with these is we tend to be operating at different levels. So, you know, we, you might have plant scientists or, uh, you know, animal breeders or, or people who are dealing with the, the science of production. And then at the other end, you'll tend to have social science, science um, study or investigation and they don't really necessarily understand the biological system that's that's going on or or the implications that changing social practices may have on the biological system or how you deal with that at that level so you know we've got this this challenge that people are looking at the overall system from different aspects um, and so you know in the in the animal plant science area people are looking at how do we how do we change how do we reduce the impact on the environment? But very often that's not actually taking into account the social, um, cultural system that operates at the production level. You know, if you think about farming as one of the oldest activities um, in, in, in a human development, and, you know, that means that, you know, there's a lot of cultural stuff, and particularly in Europe, you know, that's probably less so in New Zealand and that, you know, we don't have a history going back thousands of years. You know, New Zealand was the, the last landmass that, that was populated by humans. And humans have only been here for about a thousand years. And so we're a very new country. Um, but even then, we've got cultural practices and perceptions around agriculture that, that aren't necessarily easy to change. So we've got these complex systems, multiple overlaying. It's going to be, you know, how can we achieve change then in such systems because as you as you said i mean just the environmental impact is is huge um you know what can we do yeah i mean that's a really interesting question and i guess you know that's that's one of the key questions that i guess in my research i i, I really want to kind of understand and i guess the first step to it is, is understanding that these are complex um systems and and that they have features of complexity. So even if you just look at the, the supply chain, um, I guess as a, as a subsystem within the, the food system, we can see that um, they, they have aspects of complex adaptive systems. So often we look at a supply chain as being linear, uh, where you have you know, food production and it goes through a whole lot of stages and ends up at the consumer. However, if you look at supply chains, that then they don't operate in a linear way. They, they're actually a network. So when you're looking at that, if you're just looking at it from a linear perspective, you don't see the interplay of those. And I think, you know, one of the things about COVID that has been really interesting is that it's made people much more aware of supply chains, particularly in, in the food system. You know, often, you know, there's a generalization, but many consumers probably never really thought about where their food came from um, or, the, or the complex processes that meant that, you know, when they went to the supermarket, food was available. And, you know, one of the things that, that we found here with COVID was that, you know, suddenly you got 
shortages that that were um, happening in terms of you go to the supermarket. And one of those ones, particularly for in our first lockdown, was was flour. And so uh, a lot of people were baking at home and stuff like that. But in actual fact, it wasn't the problem with the supply of, of wheat and flour into that system. The, the constraint was actually the packaging. And, and so you, you look at that and you might think, well, yeah, that we're, we're having problems producing flour. But in actual fact, the constraint was a completely different impact on the system. So I think the first thing is really to understand and, and approach the problem from a, a, a complexity uh, perspective. And you know, we can see that in supply chains too, that there's no real overall governance of um, supply chains. And so we know with complex systems, for example, that they, they, can't, be, they can't be directed, but they can be influenced. Um, and, so, and also that they exhibit features of, of self-organization. So you know, um, supply networks are really a, an interaction of individual actors who are pretty much operating as individual actors, but that they that interaction of uh, individual actors has a effect on the on the whole supply chain, and so there's this kind of self organisation aspect to it, which you don't have any kind of controllable um, dynamic. But you've got all these individual parts to the supply chain that and and that the the overall system that that um, evolves from that you can't just make up or, or it, it has aspects of emergence. So the way the supply chain functions um, can't just be explained in terms of the combination of the individual components. And I guess, you know, there, there are aspects of complex systems that can show potential areas for change. Um, so, you know, the, the, aspect of complexity theory is that you can actually by small changes have amplified effects on the in the whole system. So I guess part of that is trying to understand where those um, levers are. And, you know, can we identify interventions that can have an have a effect on the whole system greater than than actually the individual intervention. So I think if you once you understand that complexity, then you can actually look at the fact that uh, you need to have interventions and there can be interventions that actually can be very strong and very powerful. Um, but they should and, be, so if I hear you correctly, you know, that, that there's interventions that are, that we may need to do on individual mm -hmm. actor level, yes, but yeah. some also more broadly, maybe even on the whole industry or even nationally yeah. or e even yeah. further beyond, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's, that, that's definitely the case. So, you know, one of the things also when you look at it from a complexity point of view is that, yes, you have to um, deal with it on the different levels of complexity or the different levels of the way the system operates and that just one intervention uh, at one level is unlikely to have a significant change on the whole system. So, mm -hmm. you know, you need to work from that level of kind of the global, um, you know, down to the regional, down to the farm production level. And, you know, I guess that's where the challenge is bringing, I guess, the, the, the research in terms of food systems or agri-food supply chains, bringing together that kind of interdisciplinary um, approach where, you know, there, there is a social science component to, you know, the, the, the research and the technical aspect of it. Um, is this also a focus of your current research? Yeah, so I, I guess, you know, where I'm, where I'm at is, is, is really wanted, I guess, to kind of understand um, how we can have a, an impact that I guess moves beyond just incremental innovation or incremental change, but how can we actually act or, or what's necessary to actually disrupt the, the system and, and bring in uh, significant change uh, or structural change to the system. Nick, thank you so much uh, for your time today and all your answers. 
and best of luck with your further work. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Alistair. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you.